viewers of Biotechnica, welcome back again to another video. This is Caroline Green from Biotechnica. Suppose if you are someone who are thinking to get a PhD at Baba Atomic Research Center, then this video is definitely going to help you. I'll be talking about how to get a PhD position at BARC top 10 checklist what are the things you have to take into consideration when you start applying for phd at barc so come along with me and let's talk about the complete detail of phd at bark many people have this question in their mind being a life science graduate can i enter baba atomic research center i'm going to tell you yes there are a lot of opportunity that you can become a phd graduate at bark so i'm going to talk about the complete top 10 list first important thing i'm going to talk about what are the two ways that you can enter and get your phd at baba atomic research center so first let's talk about what are going to be the two ways so first is going to be uh, through a BART online examination. So let me give you an idea. There are two ways where you can actually pursue your PhD at BARC. So our first is going to be BARC online examination. You have to go to uh, this specific website, which I have given here for your reference. So those who are looking for BARC online examination, very specifically for life science graduate I'm talking about. So www.barconlineexam.in. If you go to this website, then you can register for the examination. Usually this online examination, you can have it at the month of tentative date of March and April. Every year you'll be finding it. So what's the purpose of this examination? Suppose if you would like to get a job initially at BARC and then you want to enroll yourself in a PhD. These two things are possible at Baba Atomic Research Center. So when you're going to write this examination, you can be placed any of these positions. For life science candidate, you can enter to a training program, which means Baba Atomic Research Center is going to have a training school. And if you're going to qualify this BARC online examination, you will be working or getting a training through this program at BARC, which means you're going to get a stipend or a salary package of about 55,000 per month working as a scientific officer. So first, what will happen is when you will be writing this BARC online examination, it is like an examination overall conducted for everybody. Uh, so people who have a qualified gate will be exempted or if you wish to uh, consider for both gate as well as for the entrance examination separately conducted by them you can click on to both the options when you are submitting your application so your gate score will also be considered along with your entrance test also will be conducted suppose if you have not qualified gate examination but you want any kind of job in baba atomic research center then you can write this examination if you score very well in this examination then the gate qualified candidate as well as the qualified candidate of BARC examination will be called for the interview. And if you qualify the interview, then you will be going for this training program, which is a one year orientation course for engineering graduate and science postgraduate, which means we life science students will be coming under OCES program. And the next one is going to be two year DAE graduate fellowship scheme. This is for engineering graduate and physics postgraduate. So do not get confused with DGFS. DGFS is not for life science graduate. Only OCES is for life science graduate. So what will happen over here is after your one year of training, you'll be working as a scientific officer C at Baba Atomic Research Center. During this training program, they'll be teaching you physics, chemistry, mathematics, life sciences, along with statistics you will be learning, which means they make you an efficient scientific officer at BARC. Okay, what's the correlation of becoming a scientific officer at Baba Atomic Research Center? This in turn, you're going to get a job and you're going to get 50,000 monthly salary. And after, if you really wish to pursue a PhD or M.Tech degree, then you can apply for the PhD program at BART. This is one way where you can enter into a PhD program. So first you're entering as a scientific officer by writing BARC online examination and you get training for through this OCES and you will be working as a scientific officer. Suppose if you wish to pursue M M Tech or if you wish to pursue PhD, then you can register for the program and you can become a PhD holder at BARC also. This is one way you can go through 
but do not get confused with DGFS. DGSF is for only physics postgraduates, MSc in physics if you have done or an engineering graduate. So OCES is only for life science graduate. Through this, this is one of the way where you can enter. The second way is through this Homi Bama National Institute because this Homi Bama National Institute is the one which is actually going to give you a PhD degree. Which because I'll be talking about this in detail as I already mentioned previously, you're gonna write the examination, Bark Online examination, and you'll be working as a scientific officer. If you wish to pursue MTech or PhD, you have to go and register in Homi Baba National Institute only. Then only you'll be given a PhD degree. So let's talk about this one. Suppose if you're someone who do not have a scientific officer position at BARC, can I apply to Bark if you're gonna ask me a question for your PhD? Of course, you can also apply even without entering as a scientific officer over there. How this actually works is you'll be going to this Homi Baba National Institute website. So I'm showing you this image just because you can literally see HBNI is going to be a deemed university. And under this, you're seeing some constituent institution off campus center. Under this, actually, you are seeing Bark Mumbai. So which means under HBNI, you're seeing this Bark Mumbai coming. So if you register for HBNI, definitely you will be placed under Bark Mumbai. Through this also, you can get your PhD at Baba Atomic Research Center, Mumbai. As I already mentioned before that if you work as a scientific officer, and you'll be applying to Bark Mumbai through HBNI only. So people who are coming as a scientific officer will also be applying to HBNI. A student also will be applying to HBNI, which means HBNI is the one which actually provides you a degree, PhD degree, whether you work in any of these institutions. People who want to go directly for HBNI can choose any of these institutions, but very specifically, since we are talking about Bark, you will be going to Bark Mumbai. So let's talk about this one. So if you want to know more about HBNI, you can go to this website and this is affiliated to UGC and this is going to be a deemed university and of course we know about HBNI comes under Department of Atomic Energy. That's why people used to get confused. Can a life science students um, get PhD position in Baba Atomic Research Center? Or we can say HBNI. So it is possible and you have to remember this program code. It is going to be LIFE04 PhD in Life Sciences because you're going to apply it over there. This application is going to be very different. I'll be talking about the application form will be available online, which means you have to go to the website and you'll be going to the students portal and you'll be downloading that application form and you will be filling those form and you will be taking a printout of it and then you'll be sending along with your documents to the specific location. So I'll be talking about that also in detail. So tentative date of this HBNI PhD application will be in the month second week of June. And you will be writing exam. Yes, as I already mentioned, HBNI also conducts examination. Suppose if you are a student or a researcher, master's researcher, you want to go in for PhD program at BARC, but you have not served as a scientific officer, you can directly apply to HBNI website. And then you have to write an examination. Suppose if you have qualified gate examination, you are exempted from the examination or else you can directly go if you have not qualified any examination. You will be going for the entrance test conducted by HBNI and that test will be conducted in the first week of August. So this test everybody will be writing. Whoever has qualified this examination will be called for the interview. So in this interview, you can see gate qualified candidate will be coming and even HBNI qualified candidate will be coming as well as the scientific officer will also be coming for the interview during the second week of August. So after the interview, whoever has selected will be registering in HBNI as a PhD graduate or they'll start their PhD positions. So this application mode, as I already told you, it's offline and HBNI separately conducts entrance examination, which is a return test, which is mainly based on MCQ type. So these are the two ways where you can join as a PhD at Baba Atomic Research Center, one through a position and then uh, registering yourself in a HBNI. This is the most easiest way you have been paid and then you get registered in HBNI as a graduate and the Baba Atomic Center is going to fund you because since you have got a scientific officer position, you'll be getting 55,000. So what will happen is 
when you're going to register yourself in HBNI as a PhD fellow, Baba Atomic Research Center will give you some uh, 40,000 to 60,000 stipendship. So that is all about the ways that you can enter into Baba Atomic Research Center. The next comes is eligibility. Okay, so I'm going to talk about if you're applying either from a scientific officer to a Baba Atomic Research Center through HBNI or as a student directly applying to HBNI, what are the things you need to have? The first important thing is postgraduate degree is mandatory. Whether you are MSc in biotechnology or genetic engineering or microbiology, whatever it is, or MTech in any of the sources, you need to be a postgraduate. Masters in MSc or MTech is a mandatory one and very specifically, you need to have 60% of your mark in your PG. And as I already told you, DAE employee, which means the scientific officer who has come through the BARC online examination can also apply to HBNI as well as student or any researchers can also apply to HBNI. So whoever comes, they will be registering only to HBNI. So CSIR, UGC, NET candidate, GATE candidate, AICT candidate, everybody can apply, but it is not mandatory. If you have not qualified any examination, you can write the entrance test. If you qualify it, you can go for the interview. So this is about the eligibility to enter into a PhD program at BARC. So as I already mentioned, so if you want to get registered in a PhD program, HBNI is going to conduct entrance examination separately for all of them. Suppose if you have qualified GATE, then you are exempted from it. So it is going to be an MCQ based type of question. And this test is almost similar to that of a GATE. So even BARC online examination is also going to be similar to that of GATE. But HBNI online test is kind of very easier comparing to the BARC online test. And this is going to be conceptual, direct and numerical based type of question. So you need to know about the entrance examination. The next one, what are the documents you need to submit to HBNI? Whether you are uh, joining as a PhD after your scientific officer position or directly as a student if you're going to go for it. Proof of date of birth certificate, as I already mentioned, HBNI, you're going to apply, you're going to download this application form and you're going to fill it up and you're going to submit along with the documents and you'll be sending it by courier. So proof of date of birth certificate, mark sheets, all your mark sheets and your transcripts or your degree. Along with that, now comes the most important thing is research proposal. Since you're applying for a PhD program, you have to have your research proposal. So make sure you're writing a research proposal that calls relate with a person who is working in a bark almost equal to that of a proposal that you would like to carry out. So before that, what you have to do, you go and do an analysis of the research researchers who are working at Baba Atomic Research Center. So accordingly of your interest, you can write your research proposal. Then of course, you have to pay your application fee. It is variable according to the year and you will be taking a demand draft and you will be taking in the favor of accounts officer and you will be paying at HBNI. After you got all the application along with your demand draft, along with all the certificate, you have to send this uh, entire application along with everything to the administrative officer. So whatever it is, whether through a, a researcher or scientific officer or as a student, everything goes through the HBNI only. The next come, how is the selection process going to be? Yes, as I already mentioned very easily, a uh, scientific officer will also be attending the interview. Gate qualified candidate will also be attending the interview. And HBNI conducts an entrance test. If you qualify that, they all will be coming for the interview. So the selection process is mainly based on how much it's going to take place. So Bark selects candidates for interview based on the gate score that you have taken and you can come directly to the interview. When you're applying for this one, you, there are options like you can write only gate score can be considered. There are options like you want to write the entrance test also. In such case, you can consider gate along with the entrance test also or through the online test conducted by Bark itself. So you can go through any of these things. So it's going to be concept, analytical skills and approach to the problem, which means during the interview, you are going to be asking about the conceptual questions and they're going to ask you some analytical type of question and how you're going to approach to the problem that they're going to tell you. And this interview process is going to be very, very interactive. When you talk about most of the interviews, this is definitely going to be interactive because you need to have a physics knowledge. 
chemistry knowledge mathematics knowledge along with a life science and a statistics knowledge so this is how the selection process takes place the first is an uh, entrance examination how much you have scored and people who have got very good mark in gate and very good mark in HBNI or BARC examination when they are coming for the interview if they have not performed well in the interview they would be rejected and people who have scored very less in a gate or in the entrance examination but they, if they perform well there are chances they can also be hired so it is based on the interview along with the scores they are going to calculate and they are going to select you for the PhD position and the most important thing I'm going to tell you for everybody who are watching out this video is be strong enough in your basics whether it's chemistry, biology, mathematics or statistics this is the most important thing when you're going to write an entrance test examination or when you're going in for the interview they're going to ask you and develop analytical and numerical approach if you're someone who knows gate examinations you would be knowing how the questions usually comes so the same way that you're going to prepare for your CSAR net examination or gate examinations it's almost going to be similar to that of this examination so be strong enough in your basics when you're going to do have an analytical approach and a numerical approach the next important thing is how do you perform in the interview matters a lot the most important thing because you'll be surrounded by scientists and they'll be questioning you so you have to be cool enough to answer answer those questions but you need to know to answer it like um, analytically and how to solve the problems that they are giving it to you and always as I already told you research proposal you're going to submit so get to know what you're exactly going to return in your application form be prepared to talk about your research interest What's your research instead? Because you're going to go in for Baba Atomic Research Center where life science, how this can be implicated in the atomic research. So be prepared to talk about your interest, your research proposal, everything you need to be able to talk if asked in the interview. The next one, as I already mentioned, you need to know about uh, the research that's been going on in the Baba Atomic Research Center. There is a biological division also. You can go to the biological division uh, site and you can check what are the research that's been going on in BARC and biological division. So you can analyze the research work that's been carried out in Baba Atomic Research Center. This is very important because without knowing about what's been going on in BARC, it might be very tedious for you to do. The next important thing is have an updated resume. It's not that important because anyway, you have given all your application format, but always have an updated resume, which talks about all the research experience and your scores. The next one, of course, if you had some sort of research experience before in Baba Atomic Research Center, working as an intern or any of the CSAR laboratory or DBT laboratories, always kingpin on those points like you have in research experience and how those experience can correlate to the work that you're going to do. That matters a lot. And the last important thing I'm going to tell you is if you are going to choose uh, guide you have to choose two guides very specifically you will be working on interdisciplinary area as I already told you this is mainly uh, relying on the atomic research where physics mathematics statistics everything are involved so this is going to be an interdisciplinary area where you're going to choose two guides from two different research domain so this is actually the page from the Baba Atomic Research Center you can see Higher education programs, which is PhD programs, MTech programs are conducted by HBNI only. Whether you join as an officer, scientific officer, or you're going as a student. PhD degrees in varied discipline, whether you're from chemical science, engineering, or life sciences, as I already mentioned, are all offered at all CI and OCC, which is constituent uh, institutions, as well as the uh, offline centers, we can say, whichever is there. So those are offered at different areas. Since you want to go in for Baba Atomic Research Center, which is under HPNI, you can go for it. Students are also encouraged to carry out doctoral research in interdisciplinary area with two guides. You have to choose two guides from two different research domains. Some uh, CIs and OCC also offer integrated PhD programs are also available. I'm talking about a direct PhD program after your master's. If anybody wanted to do integrated PhD program, they are going to provide you a single degree as well as a double degree also. The integrated double degree program enables students to acquire an MSc degree in addition to PhD degree, which means if you want to join an integrated PhD program, you need to have your bachelor's degree, then you will be applying to HBNI through an integrated PhD program, 
where you can land up in baba atomic research completing your phd degrees also so this is all about what are the checklists you need to know when you're going to start phd at baba atomic research center so understand there are two ways where you can enter one is becoming a scientific officer and registering in hbni where uh, the baba atomic research center is going to fund you because you worked over there also the second is if you are a student you can directly apply to hbni and you have to fill the form write the entrance examination if you clear the entrance examination you can attend the interview if you clear the interview then you can join as a phd graduate so interviews will be gate qualified candidate will come entrance exam if you have returned and qualified they will be coming along with the scientific officer all will be coming for the interview and i was been talking about phd graduate definitely should have a post graduate degree with 60 percentage of marks and definitely there's going to be entrance test and what are the documents that you would be requiring and how is the selection process and always be strong enough in your basic and the most important thing is how you're going to perform in the interview matters a lot and you need to have your research experience your research proposal which is correlated to baba atomic research you have to have and always don't forget to choose two guides in interdisciplinary fields of two different domains so this is all about uh, the phd at bark so if you have any questions of uh, any other ways of getting into phd at bark if you are finding it difficult to find it so put it in the comment section or what's the most difficult thing that you're facing when you're looking for a phd opportunity in india so thank you all of you for your time i'm going to meet you back again with another video thank you